Mr. Collins, this is Eric Gorno. Hey, what are you doing there, Eric? I'm doing well. How are you on this Monday morning? Well, I've been anxious to talk with you because you speak my street. I totally want people to really dive into what you're doing here because in everything that's around us, there are lessons to be learned, and you prove that to be true with, with what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. It's been um, it's been a great journey for the past five to ten years of, of getting digging into the personal development space and trying to live a bit more intentional and improve myself in my life. And I'm, I'm looking forward to help share some of those lessons to help some other people as well. I'll tell you the one thing that I picked up in, in, in really getting prepared to have a conversation with you was the thing that I felt in my heart over and over again through your words is this thought right here, the potential of there being a possibility. Basically, don't run from it. Go to it and, and seek that possibility and win. Mm. Yeah, one of the things there that I really struggled with growing up um, and still struggle with, you know, is fear and yep. anxiety and, you know, facing challenges. And my whole life, I would face a challenge and run in the opposite direction as fast as I could. And uh, and, and really learning tactical skills to uh, to face challenges head on and, and overcome the fear and the reality for all of us is to do new things and get better and live better. We need to be willing to, you know, get uncomfortable and, and do new things. And I've, I've learned some things that have helped me break through those barriers that, uh, that hopefully will help some other people as well. So is that all part of the, the communication, the connection and the inclusion that you speak of? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, th there's a lot of different aspects of it, right? Like I think some of the things that I'm looking for people to be able to do to, to live better and, um, just some of the, the daily, weekly, monthly, and, and yearly rituals that um, to be a bit more intentional about how you spend your time and you know how you work your day and uh, what, what your intentions are throughout the week uh, and the day have helped me a ton. I got to tell you, I'm really in love with that idea of, of intentions, and and I, I study that profusely. And the, and where I do my intentions is I take what I call a transition walk through this forest in South Charlotte. And the goal of that is to study and and to fix my my heart on the intentions. And by the time I get mm -hmm. back, I'm a stronger soul. Oh, totally. Especially now, you know, like getting present and being in the moment yes. compared to how things were, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. It's amazing. And I don't know if it's a recency bias, but I feel like when I was growing up, if we didn't have as much technology, I could like remember the smell of things more and like just, you know, you're just more in the moment. It felt like at least looking back upon it, whereas now, you know, we're simultaneously I'm talking to you. I got an email coming in. You got a TV in the background. You got a million things going on. Uh, and, and little things like that are, like you said, like little walks and getting present and intentional. I mean, I do that every day. You know, I'll spend 15, 20 minutes of going for the walk, getting present, breathing, you know, thinking about what uh, what I want my day to look like. You know, it's, it's so interesting. People say, oh, I'm taking my dog for a walk. I think dogs take us for a walk. I think they're more in tune with <laughs> us than, than we are in them. Yeah, totally. I, I've got a little dog, a little chee weenie, uh, Jackson Brownie. He's a little cutie. He, he certainly takes me for walks so when we go out, not the other way around. <laughs> you know, you talk about how people uh, really want to discover new things. Is that a, mm. an addiction to find new things? Because here's what happens. I'm seeing a lot of quitters, too. It's like, I'm going to try this new thing, but I'm only going to give it one or two shots and then pff, I'm gone. It's like you just started. Oh, gosh. Yeah, what a good point. Yeah, I think there's a big difference between someone who's a chronic dude, like do a new finger, whatever the word is for that, you know, um, constantly trying the new thing, you, you reach a little bit of a roadblock and then, and then you quit. See, I think that person arrow isn't clear mm -hmm. on like what they actually are looking for, or want to do. Yeah. I mean, as, as an instructor in broadcasting, I, you know, everybody thinks they're a superstar right now. They, I don't even know why they even forked out the money. They, they already think they're a star, but they'll sit there and say, yeah, I'm, I'm a podcaster. And I go, how many episodes do you have? I've got maybe two or three. Come talk to me when you have 100, <laughs> then you're going to be a podcaster because, and it's, it's like people don't want to face their own journey. Oh, totally. Yeah. It, it's, I think the percentage of people who work through things and don't quit when things get difficult is, is extremely low, but, but back to the clarity thing, like I yeah. think part of the solve, the solution for that is being really clear on what your, your end goal is. Like, for example, when I set goals, you know, five years ago, I set a 10 year goal for what we wanted to do with our, you know, we do online golf coaching as well. And, and what we want to do in the personal development space. And there's, there's a lot of clarity and like, Hey, we're heading North. 
Now, while we head north, we might take a little side road here, we might pit stop here, mm-hmm. but we're always heading north. I think the people there who don't know what direction they're heading and are trying a million things at, at a time, and they don't really have a strong like why behind they want to they want to do it or, or or where they're going in the end. That's typically where you see the people quit. See, I call that the Johnny Appleseed effect, in the meaning that that everybody's willing to plant their <laughs> seeds, but they're not staying there to work the soil. Yeah, so good. So so good and so true. And and, and I think part of reality, I'm, I'm trying to do a better job in our videos of this, is with social media now and, and the way – it's easy to paint things as beautiful and easy all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like we post on Instagram and YouTube and stuff, and, and you post the highlight reel, right, the, the good stuff. But the reality of anything we've done that's been good, and I'm sure you've had the same thing, is like, holy cow, it takes a long – everything we've ever had that's good took way longer than I thought it would was way harder than I thought it was going to be, you know, t- took 10 times more effort. And I think knowing that up front and being a little more clear with people up front, maybe sets the expectation a little bit better. Man, I talk about that very subject on my iHeart show today, where I say, what I want you to do, I know that uh, Patrick Mahomes put that ball in the end zone with f- just a few seconds left, but pull the lens back and see all the players that it took to make that moment happen and the fan base and the followers. And dude, that's what I love about you is that you have a community. This, this is happening because you you chose to put the people first. Yeah, totally. And I think, I think with a lot of that, you know, at the end of the day, when I face struggles now and things that are difficult, I've got a really clear sense of where we're going and, and why we're doing it. And I really, really at the core of everything I do want to help other people. And it's easier to stick through the shit that comes up and some of the problems you get. I think when your intention is more on helping other people and you get less focus on yourself, a, a lot of reasons I would quit early, you know, was more based on the perception of, oh, what are people going to think of me when I do this? Or, right. hey, this isn't working. You know, it's like an ego thing versus when you shift the focus on, hey, how can I do this stuff to help as many other people as possible? I think it's easier to get through those, those sticking points. Do you defrag at all? And what I mean by that is I keep a journal. I call it a defrag journal where I go in there and ask the questions and then question the answers. And it's, it's amazing how the inner core of your mind will sit there and ask you tough questions. And you've got you've got to find a path. Uh, dude, totally love that. I think, um, you know, I, I, so I do a daily meditation walk for yes. 20 minutes. That's huge. Like like we talked about before. And then I'll also once a week, every Sunday, I do a 30 minute what I call think time which is basically I take out a yellow legal pad that I'm looking at right now and a pen. And I set, I literally set a timer on my phone for 30 minutes. Your brain's able to find solutions to things or, or, or you go for a walk and just let yourself think um, versus the being so busy 24 seven. I've got to ask you, Eric, and this has got to be affecting your world. These VR goggles. I mean, my God, mm. how is it changing your game of golf? Yeah. So like I just saw one of my friends brought the new, um, what, what company just came out with the brand new ones Apple? the other day, last week? Was it, was it an Apple? Apple, yeah. yeah. And I, I got a little bit of a taste of it. I saw Casey Neistat's video on it. Um, it hasn't gotten so into the golf space in particular where it's taken over, but gosh, you got to think within the next couple of years with the functionality of it. And once, once they once they get the technology better and they can decrease the price point, because yeah. what are those, like 3500 bucks? Yeah, yeah. They, yes, they yeah. are. <laughs> yeah, yeah one, one, once they get the price point down where it can get like a huge market share, uh, it, I'm very interested to see what happens with that for sure. So where can people go to find out more about what you're doing with, with your golf game as well as, the, because I like once again, I'm glad that you've made that transition from it's more than just a game. This is how you can change your life. And I, and I totally believe that non-golfers are going to learn from what you're doing here. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, so the Cogorno Golf, C-O-G-O-R-N-O, um, it's pronounced kind of like a DiGiorno pizza, but with Ooh. a C, Cogorno <laughs> Golf. That way you can remember it. <laughs> Cogorno Golf on all the social medias of getting a golf, um, that, that's a good place. And we just started a new personal development channel, Lessons I've Learned with Eric Cogorno. Um, like, it's funny you said that before, man, where I'm like, hey, our only goal is just to get the 100, get the 100 videos out. Yep. Do the 100. Yep. You know, do the 100. So you can find that there. My God, because the journey to get there, dude, I mean, I can't imagine what you've gone through the yeses and the noes and the people that said what are you doing again eric okay get back to me when you when you when you've got better answers yeah 100 percent. it's a little easier now like we've been doing our golf youtube for eight years we've got about 1500 yeah. videos <laughs> you know so we we've learned through uh through that how long it's going to take so i've got a lot of patience with the process oh my god and learning the shortcuts but you got to remember that uh, you know you can't take every shortcut because then it's going to be cheap 
Yeah, just, there's no doubt. I'd rather do quality work, let it take time, have patience, you know, build the skill. So true. Dude, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. Like I said, I love your energy and I really want to help promote you. Thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Let me know. I'll be back whenever. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thanks, Eric. Have a great day, man.